Welcome to Search for Signs. My name is Gary Willing. If this information interests you, please press the like and subscribe button and press the bell for notifications. People often ask, is any of this in the Bible, right? And somebody just uh, put up a, a comment, you know, about is my tree in the Bible or something like that. According to one of the masters, the master Joao Cool, there's only one specific reference or direct reference, excuse me, to uh, the masters in the Bible. And it was actually Hebrews 12, 23, just men made perfect. Now, I think there were other indirect references to the Bible. So like looking at, in, in, looking at it in the New Testament, right? Jesus said, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Now, I could only imagine what the Pharisees and the, the religious leaders of the time thought about Jesus when somebody ran and told him, you're not going to believe what this guy just said, right? It probably really ticked him off, right? No, it did really tick him off. But the other thing that Jesus said was, greater things than this shall you do yourself. He was talking about in reference to the miracles that he was performing at the time. And he said that. So <clears throat> I think that's often overlooked by theologians. And I think that if you look at the Bible, right, when people quote the Bible as black and white, it's a very rudimentary or elementary way of looking at it. The Bible can be looked at in an infinite number of ways, right? So when a master reads the Bible or, you know, they're looking at it at a totally different level than somebody who's just reading it for the first time, you know, or reading it on a very black and white level. So they see the esoteric truths in the Bible. When, where other people just see it literally, right? So, like, if you took it as an example, right? The only organ in the, bi in the body that I believe is referenced in the, in the Bible is the heart. But yet there are other organs to the body, right? There's the liver, there's the kidneys, there's the nervous system, the cardiovascular system, the spleen, the pancreas. None of those are mentioned in the Bible. So does that mean that they don't exist? Well, of course not. It just means that Jesus, speaking you know, about the New Testament, you know, he, they, he was speaking to people that didn't know much about life. And so he had to be kind of a raconteur and, uh, you know, and speaking in parables and telling stories. And he even said it himself. He goes, you know, you have eyes, but you cannot see. You have ears, but you cannot hear. You don't understand, right? He was saying it in a way so people could understand. If he spoke about <clears throat> one of the great universal laws that affects all of us, the, the law of cause and effect, right? In a way that the master D.K. spoke about it throughout the books of Alice, that he wrote through Alice Bailey that read like a college textbook, really. If, he, if Jesus spoke to the people back then about the law of cause and effect like that, I mean, it would have gone right through them and right past them, <laughs> you know? And it wouldn't have survived the two centuries without getting written down and then getting written down in one language and then translated into another and so forth and so forth and so forth for thousands of years to the point we're at today. Jesus had to say it very simply, what you sow, so shall you reap. Seven words, very simple, but yet speaks about the same principle. Now, is there more to it than that? Absolutely. You know, and that's where the master DK comes in because it, he was speaking when DK was writing it back, you know, a hundred or so years ago. He even said that it, it, he wasn't really writing it for the people of that time. He was writing it for the people of the future. So we'll have a greater understanding of that universal law than just what you sow, so shall you reap. You know, we have a greater understanding of it now. You know, if I bop you on the head, some sooner or later, it's gonna, I'm going to get bopped on the head, you know. But that's the way Jesus put it. He had to put it, he had to break it down that simply for people to understand it. Now, is Maitreya in the Bible? Yes. <clears throat> it might not be what you think. And I actually put a reference. I have a video of this I made months and months and months ago. But to talk a little bit further about it, one of Maitreya's incarnations was Enoch, if you remember him from the Old Testament. And it was, it was interesting because when I was a kid and I first read about Enoch, I, I there was a part of me that, in my heart that resonated with that, that biblical character. And it's interesting that I spent a lot of time now talking about Maitreya, and that was one of his previous incarnations. But 
there are other references to Maitreya, but it might not be what you think, right? Now, one was when Jesus was um, baptized and the spirit, uh, you know, manifested the, uh, the dove, right? Well, that symbolized Maitreya working through my, uh, Jesus at that time fully. You know, it was, he had worked for years to build and forge that relationship with Jesus. And Jesus did the same thing, worked very hard to um, build that relationship. But it, it became total during the baptism. And that's what that symbol was with the, with the dove. Now, the other thing is the water carrier, right? So the masters say that the age, we're moving out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Now, somebody might ask you, well, where is that in the Bible? Well, it's all throughout the Bible, but it might not be what you think either. The symbol for the fish is the symbol for Pisces, and it was the symbol long before Jesus walked on the earth. So all the intellectuals thousands of years ago or astronomers or whoever, you know, decided that that, that looked like a fish. <laughs> you know, I look at this, the constellation Pisces and I got to be honest with you, I don't really see a fish, but whatever. You know, they see a fish. So that was already agreed upon <clears throat> before Jesus even came on the scene. And yet that symbol of the fish is all throughout the New Testament, but it was put in there purposefully by the writers of that time to symbolize that Jesus was the world teacher for the age of Pisces. Now, there's also another reference to one of the cosmic ages when Jesus says to his disciples, follow the man carrying the bucket of water, pitcher of water, however, whatever interpretation of the Bible you, you're reading, and follow him upstairs and, and help create the feast or whatever like that. And that was in reference to Maitreya's future role as being the world teacher for the age of Aquarius. Now, the other one, you know, uh, Jesus says, I am the Alpha and Omega, which people refer to as, you know, think that that means that he was saying he was God. Well, he, in a way he was. But Jesus, Maitreya was the first among humanity to become a master hundreds of thousands of years ago. And he will be the last. He's going to stay throughout this entire age of about 22,000 years, 2,500 years or so. And then he's going to go off to higher work. And the next world teacher is going to be the master who was John. And then millions of years from now, when humanity is at the level of, let's say, the planet Venus or a little higher, and we've become a perfected planet and humanity as a to in, in totality is perfected, Maitreya is going to come back at that time and be the last of us to take the what's called the you know initiation but the highest of the highest initiations on the on a planet so the planetary initiations he's going to come back and take the last one so he will be the last of us to to achieve that level that's why he was saying the alpha and the omega that's one way of looking at it the other way of looking at it is jesus was saying that he is the self which the self is the alpha and the omega the self is permanent consciousness works in and in through the, the self. So it kind of goes along the lines of what my mother said back when I was a kid. Well, if the Big Bang really happened, which she believes in the Big Bang Theory, then what was the universe expanding into? Well, the masters would say it was expanding into the self. It's the space. It's the, the nothingness around consciousness. Consciousness can't affect it no matter what happens. So like Maitreya says, like you look at a house, right? You live in the house. And then the house is just, you know, it's destroyed. And right before it totally collapses, you walk out of the house, right? And then turn around and look. Did anything happen to the space that allowed that house to exist? No. It's still there. You know, the other way of looking at it is kind of like what Carl Sagan said, the famous astronomer and astrophysicist. He said, without the universe, you can't even bake a cake. <clears throat> and that self is universal, but yet it's, it's tiny at the same time. It's one... I mean, it's kind of hard to explain because it's beyond explanation, really. But when Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega, it could also be interpreted as that. But the Bible, in and of itself, holds esoteric truths that will, that will last forever, that we can always refer to and look at it. But there's so much distortion in it right now. That's why, according to Ben's master, the master Jesus is going to come 
when he his main work is going to be to help clean up a lot of the distortions of it to help you know all the stuff that was taken out put back in that kind of stuff so we can see it because right now we're we're seeing a puzzle with missing a lot of pieces you know because people took them out because they didn't suit their needs like reincarnation but yet there's a little bit in there but the whole references to reincarnation there's there's not a lot in there so are there, was there more references to my tray in the Bible and it was taken out? I don't know. Maybe. We're about to find out. But again, it just depends on what you believe. And, and it's really not about changing somebody's belief. It's, it's about what is true. And the truth of the matter is, is that we're all souls. We're all one. We're all one big family. And the truth of the matter is, is that we have to share the world's resources so that we can all live you know around the world so we can create justice in the world because that's going to create peace in the world that is the most important thing you can argue intellectually back and forth about what you see in the bible and what that person sees in the bible and i'm really not that interested in in those kind of discussions because it doesn't help you know what i'm saying if you believe in the bible the way that you believe in the bible still believe in the bible that way just be somebody who believes in the bible but yet wants justice in the world, wants everybody to feel fulfilled, wants everybody to be fed, wants everybody to have health care, wants everybody to be clothed and have shelter. That's justice. That's true justice. That's what the masters are saying that we have to establish in this world. You know, so look at it like that. I mean, Jesus said, feed my sheep. Maitreya says, you know, share the world's resources. They were talking to two different people. I mean, Jesus couldn't have said that to people back then. No, share the world's resources. Although there probably wasn't hunger the way there is today because capitalism wasn't around then. So <clears throat> it's all stemming from that, you know, the, the disparities of economic, you know, economics is all coming from capitalism and commercialization. So 2,000 years ago, those, that structure didn't exist. So the way that they explained it in the Bible was the great whore sitting on the throne, you know, all the leaders of the world are drunk on her wine. They were talking, John was talking about the markets. You see? So you have to look at things in a different way. You have to try to keep as much of an open mind when you read the Bible. And you can't read it literally. I mean, I guess you can. I mean, you can do whatever you want. But it's just, it doesn't really give you any real insights to see it literally. You know, because there's so much contradiction even in the Bible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it was written down by several different people in different languages and so forth, and that's why it all came up like that. But the other thing that is interesting is in the Buddhist text now, there, the Buddha did make a prediction about 500 years before Christ that there would come another Buddha around this time. There would come another Buddha by name, Maitreya Buddha. He did mention him by name. And said that he would ins help to inspire and galvanize humanity to build a brilliant golden civilization based on righteousness and truth, which is what Maitreya is doing, right? It's also interesting to note that it's very similar to what is said in the Revelations about the New Jerusalem. And according to the Masters, they, they weren't referring to a city in Israel. They were referring to peace on earth. So, And then one thing I do find particularly piquant, but it might be a stretch to you to think about like this, but the Buddha described Maitreya Buddha as a teacher alike of angels and of men. And Paul used very similar words when referring to love. So is it a stretch to think that? I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe not. You know, we'll see. Like I said, I mean, when you see these masters, you'll be able to, you'll be able to ask them yourself and get the answers that you're looking for, you know. But I hope you have a great day. Thanks. And as always, take action. Help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos. Have a great day.